We are on I in tests. We're discussing this concept of um, almost pay. We're discussing this concept of whether we care about the father's lineage when it comes to an animal or not. And some of the practical differences would be just the way that we're discussing is this prohibition of Osovi Espino, of slaughtering an animal and its child on the same day. So if we care about a paternal, then it would be an iser, as we said, for to slaughter a father and its offspring on the same day. But if we don't care about the paternal, so then there would be no iser to slaughter the father and its child on the same day. It would only be the mother and its child on the same day that we would actually forbid. So we're going to have some other interesting discussions over here. And uh, we'll see. We'll have uh, Amr. Oso is masculine, right? Yeah, but the Gemara pointed out, um, the Rishonah points out that Oso there is going on shore or Oseb, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's specifically, uh, definitely not specifically a male. If anything, it's specifically a female, may or may not be a male. But again, it says Oso v. Espinel. Yeah. Well, we're going to see that there's going to be an opinion that it's going to be male and female. Amr Funa Bar Chiyar Mershwal, and that's Hilch Zakeh Hananya. The Lach is like Hananya that we care about Choshishin Lezerav, we care about the father, we care about who the paternal descent is of the child, we're on the top of Ayin Testament Aleph, and therefore, we're going to have Osovi Espino that's going to apply both to a mother and its daughter, or mother and its offspring, and a father and its offspring. Shmuel Shmuel goes in his own reasons that we concern ourselves with the father's seed. Did not Rabbi Huda Omer, Rabbi Huda says, Hanoladim min is going to be very... Uh, Interesting today. We're going to have a lot of uh, cross-breeding over here. Now you have to remember that in the Torah, you're not allowed to cross-breed. It means you're not allowed to cross-breed in terms of mating. And you're not allowed to cross-breed in terms of going ahead and working them together. But let's say now you have something that was already cross-bred. Let's say you have a mule, which we're going to see as a combination of a donkey and a horse. Depending on, doesn't really matter as we'll see who the father is, who the mother is. A combination of a donkey and a horse is a mule. So you can't make a mule seemingly in the Torah because you can't put a donkey and a horse together. But let's say there's a mule. Let's say you went and you go to the marketplace. A mule is not necessarily Asr Bahana. It's not Asr and getting benefits. So let's say you want to buy two mules and you want to mate them together. Well, now the question becomes, well, what are they? If they're two of the same exact item, then you can mate them together and you can work them together. But if they're two different makeups, even though they're both mules, then you can't necessarily mate them together and you can't necessarily work them together. I thought, they wouldn't, I thought they couldn't be productive of a mating. What do you mean? I don't, I don't, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I thought that mules cannot reproduce themselves. I don't know. Maybe it's, they can work sound, It sounds like from the Gemara that they can. Yeah. What yeah. does it mean two mules of a different makeup? Then we'll see in a second. You want everything on the silver platter. We have to, uh, we have to struggle together. Hanoladim min hasus. Rita says something very interesting. You have a mule that's born from a sus, from a female horse, and their father is a donkey. So now you have two mules. Fathers are donkeys, mothers are horses. Are they allowed to marry each other? Are you allowed to breed them together? Again, it seems clear from the question and from Rashi that you're breeding them together. Can you breed two mules with the same father, same mother together? Says Rabbi Yehuda, yes. But if you have a mule that has a female mother with a mule that has a female, what? Sorry, that a female mother. With a mule that has a donkey mother, with a mule that has a donkey father, but a horse mother, that you can't breed together. Asurin, you can't breed them together. Why? So Rashi points out very interesting that Rabbi Huda is permitting you to breed together two mules of the exact identical lineage. Because we're going to have a few rules that we're going to see in a second. So let's just use the example that the Gemara here has. You have a mule that its father is a donkey and mother is a horse, right? And another mule whose father is a donkey and mother is a horse. One of them is a female, one of them is a female. Those two have the same exact lineage. Therefore, as we'll see, Rabbi Yehuda, as we're going to come out of the Maskan of the Gemara, just to make things clear, Rabbi Yehuda is going to be unclear. We're going to have a suffix as to, Rebbe, Rebbe, as to whether Rabbi Yehuda cares about the paternal, paternal descent or not. We're going to have a suffix. We're going to see that the Rabbanan definitely care about the paternal descent. The, we're going to see, and well, so, let's not jump ahead, but we're going to see that Rabbi Yehuda, we're not sure whether he cares about the paternal descent or not. If we're not sure about the paternal descent or not, if we care about the paternal descent or not, what do we have to do? We have to be choshesh, we have to be machmir for the paternal descent. So what does that mean in English? That means over here you have two animals, 
Father of one is a donkey. Father of the other one is a donkey. Mother is horse. Mother is horse. You have two that are identical lineage, right? They're both mules from the same exact lineage. So Rabbi Yehuda says, Meman of Shach, regardless of what you hold about paternal descent, whether we care about it or not, you can mate these two together. Because if we care about paternal descent, then what? You have two animals. They're both half horse, half donkey, right? Both half horse, half donkey, and therefore you can mate them together. So in terms of paternal descent, and as we'll see, it's clear in the Gemara that when you care about paternal descent, if you have half horse, half donkey, we don't care. According to the opinion says we care about paternal descent, we don't care which half is horse and which half is donkey. We just care you have half and half. And the Chiddush is going to be, you might think that when you have half horse and half donkey, with the mother being a horse, half horse and half donkey, with the father being a horse, you can't mix them together because the donkey part is going into the horse part and the horse part is going to the donkey part. Even when they're the same, you might think that you can't mix them together because the horse part is going to the donkey part. Even in this case, where you have two mules and both of their parents are identical. Horse father, donkey mother. Or horse mother, donkey father. Whatever it is, you might think you can't breed them because the horse part of this one is going to the donkey part of this one. Kamash Malan, we're not choshesh for that. So if you have the same exact lineage, Rebuta says you can do it, even if you care about the father, because here you got 50-50, it's horse and donkey. Both of them have the father horse and, again, the mother donkey or vice versa, and therefore we're good. And even if you care, if you don't care about the father's paternal descent, right, you only care about is the mother, what do you have in this case? Well, you have two of the same exact mules, where they both come from a horse mother. But if it's no ladin min or min no ladin min hasus, but if you have a case where one of the mothers is a horse and one of the mothers is a donkey, now you got a problem. Because now, if you're not choshesh for the father, if you're choshesh for the father's paternal, then each one still, even though the mothers are different, each one still has 50-50 and it's fine. But if you're not choshesh for the father's Right? If you're not Choshesh, if you don't care about the father, we should say, then what? Then you have a mother who's a horse, a mother who's a donkey. This is a pure horse, this is a pure donkey, and you can't mate the two of them together. So you see the Rabbi Yehuda is at least, definitely has to take the mother into account, and may or may not take the father into account. Again, it's going to end up that if you take the father into account, in this case, it's going to be a kula. Because if you take the father into account, then you can mix two mules, no matter who the father is and no matter who the mother is. Even if the father of this one is a donkey and the father of this one is a horse, the mother of this one is a, is a, is a horse and the mother of this one is a donkey, you can mix them because they're both 50-50. That's only if you take the father into account. But if you don't take the father into account, or you have to be choshesh, that maybe you shouldn't take the father into account, now you can only mix them if they're identical parents. Because if one of the mothers is a horse and the other mother is a donkey, even if the other father is a donkey and the other father is a horse, so they're both 50-50, but if you don't care about the father, then at the end of the day, all you have now is a horse and a donkey, and you can't mix them. That's Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says that we care about the mother for sure. We may care about the father, but we may not care about the father. Therefore, in this case, we need to worry that we don't care about the father. If we don't care about the father, the only way it's going to work is if the two mothers are exactly the same. This is Rabbi Yehuda. Who says we might not concern ourselves with the father's seed, Therefore, what? If we might not concern ourselves with our father's seed, we can't be makil and assume that they're both 50-50. However, what does the Chachamim say? They say that we do care about the father. Who do they say like? Like Hananya. We care about the father. Therefore, Oso V. Espino applies to a father as well. And for this case, if we care about the father, then you can mix any two mules you want because even if the fathers and mothers are different, they're both donkeys and horses. But whatever the combination is, they're each 50-50, and therefore you can mix them together. Man chachamim, who's this chachamim? Chanan Yehudam, archoshen lezera'ah, v'hai bar susi v'chamra. This is a female horse and a donkey, a honky. V'hai bar chamra v'susi. This is a female donkey and a male horse, even though it's, again, different mothers, different fathers, but they're both donkey slash horse, 50-50. They're both all the same names. You understand what we're talking about here? Again, if we don't care about the father, then you can only mix two animals that have the same exact mother, which means that if you have two mules with different mothers, you can't mix them because you don't care about the father. If you care about the father, then you can mix any two mules you want because at the end of the day, it's half, half horse and half donkey. I so why does Rabbi Yehuda say you can't mix different mothers? Because he might care about the father, but he might not care about the father. Therefore, if he would care about the father, you could mix them. But since he might not care about a father, therefore you can mix them because the mothers are different and you may not care about the father and therefore it would be considered to be climb. Good? Ibai lehu. Mifsha pshita lehu rabi huda dein choshen lezera avo diel masfuke mesafke lehu. It's not the question that comes again. I told you the maskana. The maskana is going to be that he's not sure. But the kavami, the maskana, the end of the gemara is going to decide that rabi is not sure. But the question becomes now, 
is he being, again, I told you that he's being Choshe, she needs to be Machmir here, and we said you can't mate two mules with different mothers because we may not care about the father. And if we don't care about the father, then you're mating two animals that are totally different animals. So the question is, is he being Machmir because he's not sure whether we care about the father or not? Or does he actually say we don't care about the father? What's the nafkamina? Says Gemara, Dilma Sfuke Mitzavkali, Lamai nafkamina, Lemishra Pri Im Haim. Can you mate a mule with its mother, the species of its mother? So, for instance, if we're talking about a case here where you have a father donkey with a mother horse, the result is a mule. Can that mule mate with a purebred horse? Father donkey, mother horse. Can that mule mate with a, with a purebred horse? Well, the, it depends. What? Father donkey, mother horse. If you only care about the mother, then what? Then that mule can breed with a pure horse, horse because the mother is a horse, of course. Of course. Of course, a horse, of course. But if you care about the father, or if you're even not sure if you should care about the father, therefore you need to be machmir. If it might be the father, if you care about the father, or you have to be choshesh and you have to be machmir, you might care about the father. Well, if the father is a donkey and the mother is a horse, then it's either 50-50 or it might be 50-50 and therefore you can't put it with a regular horse. That's what Gemara says. If you say it's clear to Rabbi Yehuda that what? That we concern ourselves, that what? That we do not concern ourselves with the father's seed. Again, he's for sure going to say we only care about the mother. shari. Then if you have a donkey with a mother horse, a mule, then that mule can breed with a regular horse because its mother is a horse and that's all we care about. However, if we say the Rebbe Yehuda is not sure, and he may care about a father, he may not care about a father, and therefore he's always going to be machmir, well, in this case, then you can't breed them because you have to be worried that it may be a 50-50 animal which cannot breed with a regular horse. Pri ma sir. My, so what's Rebbe Yehuda's opinion? Again, in that case, what are the Rabbanah going to tell you? What are the Rabbanah going to tell you? Rabbanah are going to tell you you definitely cannot mate a mule with a regular horse. Why? Because the Rabbanah care about the father, Rabbanan are like Hananya, and therefore this mule is 50-50. The 50% that's donkey cannot mate with a horse. Again, 50% of donkey, he would agree that if the other animal was a 50-50, you can mate. And you can line up the 50 with the 50, but a 50-50 cannot mate with a horse. But according to Rabbi Yehuda, it depends. If we don't care about a father at all, then a father, donkey, mother, horse, baby, mule can mate with a horse, because all we care about is that it's a horse. If he's not going to say for sure that what? If he's going to say we have to be choshesh, that maybe we care about the father, then you cannot go ahead and mate them. Toshma, Rabbi Yehuda, miracle. Hanulah de minasurus avishavi and chamor mutarin zebezeh. Yehuda says, any mule from a female horse... Even though their fathers are donkeys, mutar and zebazes. So if you have two males, the two male donkeys, right? You have a male donkey with a female horse, a male donkey with a female horse. So they have the same exact genealogy, and they have two mules. So they're allowed to marry each other. Hey, me, what's the case? If you say that there's two mules, both of them have donkeys that are fathers, and both of them have horses that are mothers, then what's the chiddush? What are you telling me? Obviously, they can mate with each other, because even if you care, if you care about the mother, what? then they have the same mother. And even if you care about the father, we said they're both 50-50 with the same exact genealogy and they're good to go, right? Or rather, what must it be? It must be where you have the father is a horse and the mother is a horse. And the other one, the father is a donkey and the mother's a horse. That's our case. Where you have a pure horse with a mule that's father is a donkey and mother is a horse. And he says that what? That they're allowed to mate. So you have this half donkey, half horse that can mate with a pure horse. What do you see that he holds? He says that you definitely do not care about the father. Therefore, it's posture that he doesn't care about the father. No. You have two cases where both fathers are donkeys and both mothers are horses. So what do you have to tell me? It's obvious. No matter who you hold like, you can mate those two together. Why do you have to tell me the chiddush that we've been taking for granted the whole time? What would you have thought, Mendel, because you just walked in and you didn't hear what I said before? What would you have thought if you have half donkey, half horse, half donkey, half horse? Would you think it's okay or not? Well, you might think it's okay, but why would you think it might not be okay? Because even though they have the same exact genealogy, and even if their fathers are both donkeys and mothers are both horses, what might you think? You might think that the donkey part of this animal is mating with the horse part of this animal. 
and the horse part of this animal is mating with the donkey part of this animal, even though they're both half donkey, half horse. Says the Gemara, Kamash Malon, Mao de Sema, Arts Asi Sad de Sus, Mishnamish Mitzar Chamor, Vitzar Chamor, Mishnamish Mitzar Sus. Kamash Malon, he's telling us that in fact it's permitted. And therefore we still don't know. We still don't know Rabbi Yehuda's reasoning. We don't know if Rabbi Yehuda is not sure or not. Again, because Meman of Shach, no matter how you hold, whether you hold that you're going to care about the father or you're not going to care about the father, half horse, half donkey, if they're both, again, if both of the mothers are horses and both of the fathers are donkey, for sure you could breed them. Because at the end of the day, if you only care about the mother, they have the same mother. If you also care about the father, then they have the same exact makeup, 50-50. And therefore, based on that case, we can't prove whether Rabbi Yehuda doesn't care about fathers or he cares about fathers, maybe. Not for sure, but he might care about fathers. Toshma, come learn. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, pure de Shetava, if you have a female mule that wants to mate, ein marvin ela lo sus velo chamor ela mina. If you have a female mule, which is from a donkey and a horse, you can't mate them with a pure horse or a pure donkey, rather only with its own kind, a male mule. If you say it's clear to Rabbi Yehuda that we don't care about the mother, that sorry, that we don't care about the father, then why can't you mate a mule with a pure bread of whatever its mother is? If we only care about the mother, you should be able to mate a mule with the pure bread of whatever its mother is. So if this mule is from a donkey and a mother, if the father's a donkey and the mother's a horse, then if you don't care about fathers, then that mule should be able to breed with a pure horse, because the mother's a horse. Says the Gemara, So it must be the Rabbi Yehuda is not sure, and he's machmir. Says No, we're dealing with a case where we don't know who the mother is. If we don't know where the mother is, then you can't. You're right. If we knew who the mother was, then maybe one would suggest that you can breed him with a pure bread of the mother because, again, it's the same. So I understand. If you don't know what the mother of this mule is, right? If you don't know the mother of the mule, if you have a mule and you're not sure if the father's donkey and mother's horse or mother's donkey and father's horse. Sorry, I said the same thing. You're not sure if the father's donkey and the mother's a horse or the father's a horse and the mother's a donkey. So why can you go ahead and even breed it with its own kind? It might be two different kinds. And we said the only way you could do it with its same kind is if what? The only way you could do it is if you hold that we care about the father. But if you say that we only care about the mother, then if you have half donkey, half horse, half donkey, half horse, but the mothers are different, then you're breeding a horse with a donkey. Says the Gemara, Hachikamer, Ein Marvin Alelo Minsus Velomin Chamor Lafisha Ein Yodim Bimina. Now what it means is that this mule. If you're not choshesh for the father, then this mule you can't breed with anybody because you might be breeding it with the wrong type. They lived out with Siman, and why can't you check the signs? What does that mean? Amr Abai, Ave Kale, if there's a voice that's deep, if a mule has a deep voice, then what? Then it's like its mother. That means its mother was a donkey, Bar Chamra. A mule that has a deep voice means that it's an offspring of a donkey who has a deep voice, which goes ahead and brays. Sniff Kale, if a mule nays, if its voice is shrill like a horse, bar sutya, it's the offspring of a female horse. If it has a big nose, it's Jewish. The Amar Rav Papa, the Amar Rav Papa, Amar Papa says, Rav Rivan Udne Vizutra Genufte, if the ears are large and its tail is short, bar chama, it's the child of a female donkey, Zutra and Udne Viraba Genufte, bar sutya, if its ears are small and its tail is long, it's the child of a female horse. So if you have a mule, and you don't know who the father is and who the mother is, just look at it. See what it sounds like. See if it has long ears, short ears, long tail, short tail. What it sounds like, you'll know what the mother is. No, we're dealing with a mule that's mute, doesn't make any noises, and it's amputated. It doesn't have any ears or, okay, it doesn't have any ears or, um, or tail. Okay, so again, at the end of the day, what's the story with Rabbi Huda? What does he hold? Does he hold that we definitely don't care about the father, or we're not sure if we care about the father? Tashma Damar of Huna Bere de Ravi Yoshua, Hakol Modim Bepri Im Haim Sha Asr. Everybody agrees that the mating of a mule, which is crossbred, is Asr to the species of its mother. So let's say you have a donkey and a mother horse, father donkey, mother horse that have a mule, then you would think that what? It can marry a regular horse. So as anymore, everybody holds it's not. Why? Because everybody holds you have to at least be Choshesh for the father. Shmamina, Svuke Misav Golei, Shmamina. So again, I just want to make sure, since we're done with this stuff, I want to make sure that everybody understands what we're saying again. You have two opinions here. You have the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda and the opinion of the Rabbanan. The Rabbanan slash Hananya. Rabbanan say, we care about the father. Which means anytime you have 
an animal, we care about the father. Therefore, Osovi Espino is going to apply. That's how we started this whole discussion. Osovi Espino is going to apply to a father as well. A father and its offspring will be a problem. So again, you have this case where if you care about the father, that means we care about the mother, obviously, and the father. So the only way that you can mate two mules together is if they're both mules. So according to him, no. So according to him, you can mate any two mules together. You can mate a mule with father that's a horse and mother's a donkey, even with a mule that's father's a donkey and mother's a horse, according to Rabbanan. Because again, we care about a father according to him. And if we care about the father, all we care about is that each one of them is 50-50. Therefore, you can mate any two mules together according to the Rabbanan. They're going to be make you can mate any two mules together. But at the same token, they're going to be machmir, that you can't mate a mule even with a purebred of the mother. Because if it's 50-50, you can't, they're going to be make, you can mate two mules together because they're each 50-50. And we don't care that this one's father's a donkey and this father's a horse. But they're not going to let you mate a mule with, let's say the mule is father, donkey, mother, horse. They're not going to let you mate the mule with a donkey for sure. And even with a horse. Even though the mother's a horse, you can't mate with a horse because this one is 50-50 and this one is pure horse. That's going to be pure the Rabbanan. Donkey, pure donkey or pure horse. I right. Think, yeah. But this is 50-50 and this is pure donkey or pure horse, whichever one you choose. Yeah. So they're going to be makil for two mules together, but they're going to be machmir that a mule can't mate with a purebred. Now flip it around to Rabbi Yehuda. It comes out in the Maskana. Rabbi Yehuda is not sure whether we care about the father or not. Well, what does that mean? That means we have to be choshesh every single time. That means he's going to let you mate what? He's going to let you mate only two mules that have the same exact lineage. Because in that case, even if we, if we care about the father, then you got 50-50-50-50. And if we don't care about the father, then since they have the same exact lineage, they're both mothers or horses, then it's okay. He's only going to let you mate a mule that has the same exact lineage to another mule. He will not, like the Rabbana, let you mate any two mules together. Because if you have a mule whose father is a donkey and mother is a horse, with a father, horse, mother, donkey, if you care about the fathers, then that's fine. But he's worried that you may not care about the fathers. If you don't care about the fathers and you only care about the mothers, then one of them's mother is a horse and one of them's mother is a donkey. So he'll let you mate two mules with the same exact makeup, but will not let you mate two mules that are different makeup different fathers slash different mothers. And of course, he will not let you mate what? He will not let you mate a mule with a purebred because even though had he been sh- certain that we don't care about the father, he would have allowed that if the purebred is the same as the mother. Since he's nervous that we may care about the father, he needs to be choshesh in that case as well. So again, because he's nervous that we may care about the father, but he's not committing to saying that we don't care about the father, he's going to have to be machmer in every single case, except for two mules with the same exact lineage. Good? If if you're going to hitch two mules for me, here they're not mating. He wants to pull them in the wagon together. That's also climb. You can't work them together. So he didn't know. You have two mules, and he didn't know what the makeup was. So he wanted to make sure that what? He wanted to make sure that it wasn't climb. Now, again, according to the Rabbanan, of course two mules can be together because we assume that they're both 50-50 and they're good. Within the opinion, though, that says we don't care about the father, I guess he wanted to be worried about that opinion as well. You need to make sure that what? That the two mules have the same mother. That they're both horse, donkey, horse, donkey, or donkey, horse, donkey, horse. Says Gemara, Alma Kisavar in Choshen Av. There we see the Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Abba holds that we do not concern ourselves with the father's seed, because if we did, he wouldn't check carefully. He would just assume two mules are okay. Says Gemara, Visiman in Deoraisa. So you see that, first of all, he only cares about the mother. Therefore, he wants to make sure that the two mothers are the same, that both mules are the same, because if he cared about the father, he wouldn't care that the mothers are the same. Mule is mule. They're both going to be from a horse and a donkey. And he also, interestingly, shows you that Siman is Daraisa because Kalaim is an Issa Daraisa. And he's saying that by checking the Simanim, we can rely on the Simanim to tell us that these two mules are exactly the same mother. Clearly, if he's allowing you to work the animals together, relying on Simanim, he's clearly showing you that I rely on Simanim on a Daraisa level to allow you to then do something that might be an Issa Daraisa just by looking at the Simanim. Mating is, uh, mating is not a it is, it is. But here he's just insane. It happens to be the case here is that he wanted the two animals to pull. But it happens to be that mating would also be. If one was uh, male and one was female, even though they were the same yichas, would that be a problem? That's, no, so that's what we're talking about the whole time. No, no. We're talking about mating a male and female. You're talking about working a male and female together? I would think so. Why would it be? No, one second. If they have the same exact yichas, 
then it's not a problem according to anybody. Well, okay? A male and female according to anybody is not going to be this. Oh, you're talking about because of the fact that one of them might be stronger than the next? So I don't know what the Allah no, is. Can you... Is this, I don't know. I don't even, it, That's a separate conversation in terms of can you have a male and a female of, let's say, can you have two horses, a male and a female horse, can they be pulling together? That's a separate conversation. Yeah, no, I'm saying this would be a thought to hear because you're not, I don't think, know if you're guaranteed that the, the, the end, of, end of products that they're exactly the same. So we're saying, again, it sounds like it sounds like we're assuming that both of these mules, let's just... So the ones the male, one's the female, they're going to have different... Right, in uh, uh, But again, but that has nothing. But that has nothing to do with a mule. That has nothing to do with a mule. That would be the same question if you can have a female horse and a male horse pulling together. This we're assuming is that you have two male mules, and the question becomes: Can these two male mules pull together? They can only pull together according to this opinion if both of their makeups are exactly the same. Now we have another case, which is a koi. A koi is another species, which is actually not a mule, which is a horse and a donkey. A koi, well, a horse and a donkey is a non-Jewish animal, but a uh, a koi is a oh a koi a koi is a um, a koi is actually a goat and a deer. A koi is actually a kosher animal. It's a combination of a goat and a deer. So let's see. Tana Rabbanan. Osovi Espino Noeg Beklaim Uve Koi. Osovi Espino applies for a climb and a koi. We're just going to talk about the koi now. We have Lezomer Klaim Abam in Ezumin Arachel. If it's a goat and a sheep, then Osovi Espino Noeg Bo. Koi Eino Osovi Espino Noeg Bo. So there's a machlokas between the Rabbanan and Rabbi Eliezer if Osovi Espino applies, applies to a koi. Chamim say yes. And Rabbi Eliezer says that the Isra of Osovi Espino does not apply to a koi. So if you have two kois, you have a father koi or a mother koi even, and an offspring, you can shech those two on the same day. What koi are we talking about? It's the product of a goat and a deer. We're going to see that even though it calls it a tzviah, we're not going to be for sure right now that we're talking about a mother deer or father deer. It's unclear. We're just dealing with a goat and a deer. So let's discuss. We have a koi, which is the result of a goat and a deer, which is seemingly a kosher animal. But again, you can't mix the two together. But now you have a koi which was mixed, it was mated, a goat and a deer were mated, and now you have the koi. Question is, does this isser apply to a koi or not? <coughs> Rabbanon say yes. Rabbi Lezer says no. Says a Gemara, hechi dami. What's the case where you have a goat and a deer? Ilima b'tayishabalatzviyavialda. If you have a male goat with a female deer that has a koi that has a baby, v'kashachid la vilibra. Now you slaughter who? Let's assume the mother. You slaughter the mother and her offspring, which is a koi. On the same day, that can't be the case because you're saying basically what's the case here? You have a koi which was born from a male goat and a female deer. Now you shech the female deer, the mother, and the koi, which is the result of this union, on the same day. And you said it's a machlokis, Rabbanan and Rabbi Eliezer, whether that's an Isra or not. Rabbanan say yes, Rabbi Eliezer says no. That can't be the case because Amr of Chista, Rav Chista says, HaKomodim. Everyone agrees that where the mother is a female deer, this case, and the father is a goat, and the koi is therefore part goat, part deer, that you're going to be exempt. Why? Because what does the pasuk say by an animal? What does the pasuk say? Se ubeno amarachmana. The case of Osovi Espino is only a se, a sheep or a goat and its offspring. What's the case here? It's a deer and its offspring. That's why I use the example of the mother here, because if you would shach the father, then it would be a goat, it would be fine. But over here you have a deer, again, Father goat, mother, let's say you just have a deer in general. You have a deer, a regular deer. Deer and the deer kid, that's not in the sort of, of a Sovi Espino because that's not a se, that's not a, that's not a domesticated animal, that's a undomesticated animal. So now the Gemara is saying if you have a father goat with a mother deer and you shech the mother deer with this koi, even though the koi you can argue is part goat, part deer, maybe it's part of this idea of a Sovi Espino, but the mother is not. Because the mother's a deer, so it's not in the parsha of Osovi Espino. Velo tzvi ubeno. It's not a deer and its offspring. Ela b'tzvi habal tiyash Rather, what's the case? You have a male deer with a female goat. V'kashach ilav v'libra. And now you go ahead and what? You shech the female goat with the koi, with the baby. So now what? Now the Gemara says, Ramar of Chisa, that can't be the case either. And that's the case where Rabban and Rabbi Lezer are arguing. That can't be the case either. Why? Hakol modim bihi tiyashu b'na tzvi shechayev. Because then the opposite. If the mother is a goat and the baby is a koi, then there's no question that for sure Oso Espino applies because where does it say that the Oso, where does it say that it needs to be a se, a sheep or a goat? Only the Oso, only the mother. The Beno doesn't have to be a se necessarily. 
And therefore, again, if the mother is a deer, for sure, the Isra doesn't apply. If the mother is a goat, then for sure the Isra applies, no matter what the child is. Therefore, it can be that either one of those are the case, that's a koi, because then what's the machlokas when you say that Rabbanan and Rabbi Lezer are arguing the case of a koi? Says the Gemara, Sam Rachman over no koldu. All the Torah said was that it needs to be a sen, then any type of offspring. So, what's the case that you're going to tell me that there's a koi case? It can't be when the father is a goat and the mother's a deer, because then for sure the Yisra doesn't apply according to everybody. It can't be where the father's a deer and the mother a goat, because then for sure the Yisra does apply. So, what's this case of a koi with a deer and a goat where there's going to be a machlokas between Rabbanan and Rabbi Eliezer. We're dealing with a case where you have a male goat and a female deer. But you just said what? If it's a male goat and a female deer, then there's no iser because the mother's a deer. No, so it's not that you're shechting the deer and its child. You now, you now they have a bas, they have a koi, which is the result of, again, a male goat and a female deer. And that koi marries a koi. And now we're not shechting the deer and the koi. We're shechting the koi and the koi. Now we're shechting the deer's grandchild. So the koi and the koi, the two guys, uvas yalda bain, and the female had an offspring, v'kashachil la vibra. So you're shechting the koi and her offspring on the same day. So what's the machlokas? If you're shechting the koi and its offspring on the same day, so why is there a machlokas, Rabbanan and Rebbe Yezer? Rabbanan savre choshin lezer av. So the Rabbanan say that we have to be concerned with the father's seed. So what was the father's seed? Well, what was the father's seed? You had a male goat, and a female deer. Again, it's a little complicated. Male goat, female deer, what's the koi? The koi is what? The koi is 50-50. 50 goat, 50 deer. Let me ask you a question for a second. The Torah says, se, o sovi espino. What would you think? Our regalachas, without looking. Would you think that a 50-50 is included in se, or 50-50 is not included in se? Again, for sure a deer is not in the iser because it's not a se. For sure a se is in the iser because it's a se. 50-50, it's partly deer, partly se. Is it in the yes, or is it out of the yes, sir? Oh, perfect. That's always a safe answer. So the Gemara is going to say that right now we're assuming that everybody's going to say that a se includes even a part se. Se osovi es beno. If the oso, we don't care about what the beno is, because again, it says se by oso and then whatever the beno is. So as long as the oso is part se, that's all we care about. So now think about the case for a second. Let's say it outside. Male goat, female deer. If you hold that we care about the father, then what do you have here from the koi? The koi is 50-50. If that koi now has a baby, right? So what's the story? If you shech that koi, which is 50-50, it's in the parsha of Seh, with its baby, that's an isser. But if you hold not like the Rabban, and if you hold like Rebbe Liezer, who maybe says what? That we don't care about the father all you care about is the mother, then what do you do when you have a male goat with a female deer? What's the baby going to be? A deer. And what's the next baby going to be? A deer. And therefore, it's not going to be in the Yisra. That's the machlokas. What's the problem with that? The problem is that you're coming up with this crazy case of a koi to come out with the same machlokas that we just had in a much easier case of two regular animals, a mule. The, the bottom line is that if you think about it, the machlokas they're having is do we care about the father or do we not care about the father? What do you got to come out with this crazy case of a koi? Just say he holds like Hanania that we care about the father and he holds like the Rabbana that we don't care about the father. What are you coming up with this whole crazy case of a koi just to get out the point that he holds like that we care about the father and he holds that we doesn't care about the father? In other words, you're, you're questioning why does the Gemara go through Why does they go through this whole thing again with a different uh, You're telling me that the machlok is between Rabbanan and Rabbi Eliezer is that Rabbanan say we care about the father and therefore you're going to be in the Isra of a Soviet Espino because it's at least partly se and the Rabbanan saying you don't care about the father. If that's all, true, we're doing it all over. then why are we having this whole discussion? Why are we, why, so then, so then why doesn't it just say over here that the reason that it applies or doesn't apply is because this one's choshesh and this one's not choshesh. What are we going through this whole exercise? Says Gemara, Rabbanan Savi choshen lezera av v'seva filu mixase. Therefore, what we care about the father, which is what, which is a goat, and therefore the koi is half and half, and se includes half and half, and therefore it's going to be in the parsha of Sovi Espino when it has another child. Rabbi Leizer Savar ein choshen lezera av v'seva filu mixase lo amrinan. He says we don't care about. The father. Therefore, what? This is not even, well, he also, for some reason, the Gemara says he also holds that we don't say se, mix us, but it doesn't matter. Even if he would say that we care about part se, 
this baby's not part said because all we care about is a mother, and the mother's a deer, so it's a deer. Says the Gemara, the question I just answered. That's the question I just asked you. Why are they having this whole exercise here? Just tell me that they have the same achlokes. <laughs> that means, doctor, in essence, what it's saying is Rabbi Liaz, Rabbanan say that a koi is in the parsha. What's Rabbi know? And Rabbi Liaz says a koi is not in the parsha. Instead of saying that, why doesn't it say Rabbanan hold choshin lezarav? And Rabbi Lezer holds Ein Choshen Lezerav. And at some point, when we're listing all of the cases that are going to be in Afghamina, you'll list the case of Koi as well. But why are we limiting this Machlokas of Koi to them and not mentioning it when we're talking about the Machlokas of Chananya over there? Says Gemara, Ipligi Be'ahi, Havamina Baha, Filu Rabbanan Modu. Deseva Filu Mixel Armin and Kamashla. No. I'll tell you what the Chiddush of this argument is. If you would have just put Rabbi El, if you would have just put the Rabbanan with Chananya, and Rabbi Liezer with the other opinion, and say, well, they both hold Choshen Lezerav, and they hold, we don't care about the father, then in the case of the Koi, you'd be confused. Because you would think what? You would hold that even if, in general, we care about the father, Rabbanan would say what? Even if, in general, we care about the father when it comes to general cases, maybe in the case of Osobi Espino, even if we care about the father, half of a se is not a se. The whole chiddush of this discussion here is not to teach me that this one holds we care about the father and this one doesn't care about the father. You could have told me that, that this one holds like and this one doesn't. The chiddush here is that even when you say you need another step, that there are two things required, again, like we've been saying, in order for there to be an issue, there's two things required. First, you need to care about the father, because again, otherwise the mother over here is a deer and it's out of the parsha. The first step is that you need to care about the father, that he's a goat. And the second step is that you need to say that when it says seh, it includes even a 50% seh. That's the chiddush here. The chiddush here is not that we include the father. He could have said that elsewhere. The chiddush that he's giving us in the case of koi is that when it says seh, that osovi espino is in the parsha of what? That says in the parsha of osovi espino, it includes even an animal that's 50-50. That was the Chiddush over here. Because otherwise, if you would have just said the Rabbanan care that what? The Rabbanan say that we go by father? That still wouldn't have taught us that a koi is in the parsha. Because very nice, we go by father, but maybe the Torah requires what? That the animal is 100% a seh in order to be in the parsha of Osovi Espino. The Chiddush of this whole discussion in the Gemara is that, is, that, is that an animal is going to be in the parsha of Osovi Espino even if it's only 50% seh as long as it's partly seh. How do you have an animal that's 50% seh? Well, you can have it if you hold that you care about the father's paternal thing. Says the Gemara, we're going to do one other case, and then we're going to stop. We have another case where koi is going to come in, and that's by kisoy hadam. We know that kisoy hadam is only done, it's interesting, it's the opposite of osovi espino. Osovi espino is only by a seh, only by a sheep and a goat. It's only by a domesticated animal. Kisoy hadam, the mitzvah of covering up the blood that you shech something, that's only by an non-domesticated animal, by a deer or by a bird. We don't do kisoy adam on a behema. So it's just interesting. So now, in, in a, if you shaft a regular, a regular shafting, they don't do kisoy adam, do no. Because that's a goat, because that's a cow. You only do kisoy adam if you shaft a, it says in the Pasuk, you only do kisoy adam if you shaft an undomesticated animal or a bird. So now you have an interesting, now you have the flip side. Because now we were trying to fit in to is this animal that's 50-50, is that considered to be a seh? And we said, well, seh includes 50-50, and therefore, if you go by the father, then you can say that this half deer, half sh- this half deer, half goat, where the father is a goat, you could say, well, it fits into seh because it's got 50% goat, and 50% goat is enough to make it a seh. Now you got the opposite. Now you got it, in order to be in the chiyuv of kisoy adam, it needs to be in the parsha of deer. And then when it says that's to be in the parsha of deer, now we're going to have the flip side conversation. Well, if it's 50% deer... Is that in the parsha of deer? Is that not in the parsha of deer? What's the nafkmina? Who cares? Well, nafkmina is going to be like, do you do kisar adam? Okay, so then just do kisar adam. Who cares? The mar is going to say, well, what happens on yantiv? You can only shecht an animal if you do kisar adam. We can only do kisar adam on yantiv. Kisar adam involves, which is going to be the next parak. We're going to see it involves some isure dirabanan. So we push off the isure dirabanan. If you want to shecht a deer on yantiv, you could shecht a deer and you do kisar adam, even though it's isure dirabanan. You could do it because it definitely needs kisar adam, so you can shecht. But if kisar adam over here is only may be necessary because it's 50% deer, 50% not deer, then what? Then you can't shech the animal on Yantiv. You could shech the goat on Yantiv, which doesn't need Kisar Adam. You could shech the deer on Yantiv, which definitely needs Kisar Adam. You can't shech the 50-50. Why? Because if it doesn't need Kisar Adam, then an you're doing an Isser. Okay, so then shech without Kisar Adam. You can't because it might need Kisar Adam. So then you're stuck. 
That's what the Gemara says. Vihadanan koi ein shachnu da sobi yantiv vim shachnu im lechas and es damo b'mayaskinim. What's this case where you can't shachnu koi on yantiv because you're afraid that what? You're afraid you won't be able to cover its blood. Eli ma b'tay shabal atzviya v'yalda. If it's a male goat and a female deer which has a baby and what and now you want to shach the koi bein l'rabban or bein l'rabbi liyazer lishchot v'likase both according to Rabbi Lezer and the rabbanan you can shach it why because if the mother is a female deer what if the mother is a female deer then for sure what then for sure it needs to have kisoy hadam right and tzvi v'afi l'mixasvi again we're going to assume that at this point everybody agrees that a tzvi even includes a mixasvi. They're there for what? If you only care about the mother, then it's fully a deer because the mother's a deer. If you care about the father and the mother, then it's still 50% deer, 50% goat, and therefore you can shecht it, bein l'rabban and bein l'rabbi liyazer. So that can't be the case where we say that you can't shecht it and can't cover it. Ela b'tzvi ha'ba'ala t'yosha v'yal. There must be that you have a male deer with a female goat, and therefore what? Well, now you're also, well, what's I don't understand? If you have a male deer with a female goat, so according to Rabbani, you can still shaft it because it's 50% deer, because we care about the father. Therefore, you can shaft it because 50% deer, when it says that you shaft a deer, that includes even a 50% deer. What's the question? If it's a female goat mother, then you can shaft it and you don't do Kisar Adam, because it doesn't need Kisar Adam, because all we care about is the mother. So what's this case? No matter how you set up this case with a koi, how can you set up the idea that a koi can't be shafted on Yantiv? Because you can't cover its dam. Either way, if the mother is a deer, if the mother of this kis, if, if the mother of the koi is a deer, then for sure it needs kisoy adam. And then everybody says shechted and do kisoy adam. And if the mother is a goat, and the father's a deer, then according to Rabbanan, it would still need kisoy adam, and you shechted and do kisoy adam. And according to Rabba, and, 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 and according to Rabbi Lazar, it doesn't even need kisoy adam. So you can shecht it without kisoy adam. So what's this case? La'olam abala tiyash. It's a male deer with a female goat. Well, if it's a male deer with a female goat. So then we said, what's the problem? <clears throat> male deer with a female goat, Rabbanan say, it's half deer, therefore it's in the parsha of deer, therefore you shaft it and you do kisar adam. And Rabbanan say, well, we only care about the mother, which is a female goat, therefore you shaft it without kisar adam. Says so it's not so pashat. Virabbanan svuke misaf guluhu i choshishin ledera av ki o i ein choshishin. No, the Rabbanan don't hold that for sure we don't care about the father. They're like Rabbi Yehuda, that we're not sure if we care about the father. So again, What's the case here? We have a male deer with a female goat. Male deer with a female goat, so you can't shaft it on Shabbos. You can't shaft it on Yantiv. Who's that according to? Well, according to Rabbi Eliezer, that we only care about the mother. So if you have a male deer with a female goat, you can shaft it on Yantiv. Because you only care about the mother and it doesn't need kisoy. Who is it saying you can't shaft it on Yantiv according to the Rabbanan? Why not? If it's a male deer with a female goat, it's 50-50. And Svi includes 50-50. No, because he's not sure. And he says, you have to be choshesh, that maybe what? That maybe we go by the father, but choshesh, that maybe we don't. So now you're stuck. Because it might be a goat, and therefore what? It doesn't need kisoy. But it might be what? It might be 50-50, and therefore it needs kisoy. So you can't shaft it and do kisoy, because it might need kisoy. But you can't shaft it and not do kisoy. You can't shaft it and not do kisoy, because it might need kisoy. You can't shaft it and do kisoy, because it might not need kisoy. Therefore, according to the Rabbanan, and you're stuck. Finally, says the Gemara, if you tell me that the rabbis are uncertain, therefore you have to be Choshesh, the Rabbi Ezer Pshitalei. That sounds like you're learning. Rabbi Ezer says it's Pashat, that what? That an animal that is 50 50, we don't care about the father. So according to Rabbi Ezer, we don't care about the father. According to the Rabbana, we're not sure. We know that what? You have to give gift portions to the Kohen. Now, again, it's interesting. This does not apply when you're giving a korban. When you're bringing a regular animal, a behema, you have to give the gifts to a kohen. The question is, does this apply to a koi as well? So the Rabbanan say that a koi is included in matanos, it is a behema, and the Rabbanan says a koi is not a behema, because again, the, the, talking the Beit we're talking about in the base of Mikdash, talking about, well, we're not talking about korbanos. We're talking about if I, at the time of the base of Mikdash, if I go out and I shaft an animal at home to eat, oh. if I shaft a koi to eat, korbanos do not give. They, the korbanos give other parts to the kohen. Uh-huh. But this, these, these things of the zorah lechaim in the cave, the four leg, the jaws, and the stomach, they go to a kohen for any animal that you shaft. So if you shaft at home, you want to shaft a koi at home, you want to eat it for dinner, assuming that, again, it's a combination of a what? A deer and a goat, so it's fine because it's a kosher animal. You can't mate it, but you can eat it seemingly. So what? So says the Gemara, well, according to the Chachamim, you'd have to what? It would be in the Parsha of Behema, 
Because again, this idea of giving the stuff to the Kohen only is by Behema, not by Achaya. So it's in the parsha of Behema, therefore you'd have to give the presents to the Kohen. And according to Rabbi Lezer, you would not have to give the presents to the Kohen. Says Gemara, B'maya Skinam, what kind of Koy are we dealing with? Elima betayi shabala tzviya v'yalda. If you're dealing with a male goat and a female deer... And therefore, what? Bishmal Rebbe Yezer de Pater. A male goat and a female deer. According to Rebbe Yezer, what? What is that? A male goat and a female deer. If you only care about the mother, what is that? Male goat and female deer. If you only care about the mother, what is that? That's a deer. Therefore, I understand why he says it's Pater from the presence. No, we're talking about the presence now. Pater from the presence because we're dealing with a mother deer. Bishmal Rebbe Yezer de Pater. Kasavar seva filu mixa selo amrinan. Because he says what? That we don't say even a mixa se. El rabbanan. But according to rabbanan, nihide kasavri seva filu mixa se. But according to the rabbanan, I don't understand. According to rabbanan, what do you have here? You have a male go with a female deer. What do you have? You have 50 50. What should you have to do? So the rabbanan say what? You have to give it to a kohen. Why do you have to give it to a kohen? It's 50 50. What should you have to give to a kohen? If it's 50% goat and 50% deer, how much of the things should you have to give to the kohen? Half the presents. Half the presents. The goat part. Why is it saying you got to give him the deer part? What's this a case of? And, okay, so that's what the Gemara says. The Gemara says, why should he have to give the gift part to the coin? So the Gemara says, I understand they don't have to give him half. That means half of it, they hold he doesn't have to give since it's what? Since it's at least half deer. However, the other half, what? The other half, so Lemaise could be a sa. You're dealing with a koi that's a male deer and a female goat which gave birth. Who hold what? Half the matanos. It should be the entire gift. We'll this tomorrow. But the point is that it comes out that they're arguing not necessarily on this idea, but they're arguing whether set in general, which we took for granted that se, if all the other details work out, se will include even a 50% se, they're arguing whether that's true or not. Maybe a se doesn't include a 50% se, and it has to be 100% se in order to be chayiv in all these dinner.